7 o'clock by Longine, the world's most honored watch. Product of the Longine Whitnor Watch Company. From New York City, the makers of Clipper Craft Clothes for Men and more than 1,200 leading retail stores from coast to coast present Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's immortal character, the world's most famous detective, Sherlock Holmes. Starring John Stanley. <laughs> this week's adventure, The Fabulous Windmill. We've, we've dug terribly deep into the earth, Holmes. Are you sure there might be something buried here? I've no doubt, my dear Watson. Oh, this is fantastic. Here in the black of night, digging for... Wait, a shovel. I, I feel something. Quickly, then. Yeah, I'll shovel this earth away. Wait, a human face. There's a body here. I'll just push the earth aside. Yes, body is horribly bruised, lacerated. Spine snapped in two. Who could have done this, Holmes? The answer lies just before you, Watson. Inside that abandoned windmill. The insane killer awaits us just inside this mill. Shall we step in to see him? Here's the door. So, Dr. Watson, this time we find you resting in your study. Yes, Mr. Harris, but I'm fully prepared to report another of my incredible adventures with hope. And which shall it be tonight, Dr. Watson? I've given it the title of The Fabulous Windmill. It concerns a crime that only the most diabolical brain could conceive. A technique for a homicide that would chill the bones of the calmest soul on earth. Wonderful, Dr. Watson. I shall do my part, but first you must do yours. You must give us a word of your very wise advice about Clippercraft clothes. A really pleasant surprise is in store for you at the friendly independent store in your community that sells Clippercraft clothes. It's a suit that's so beautifully tailored of such superb fabrics that you're likely to say, now there's a suit I wish I could afford. And then you'll glance at its price. And will you be surprised? Only 40 and $45. How is this possible? Well, more than 1,200 of this country's finest independent stores have concentrated their immense purchasing power to really give your hard-pressed dollars a break. The Wonder Clipper Craft can give you the extra-long wear of rich, full-bodied worsted suits at only $45. Ask to see them at the fine independent store in your community whose clothes bear the Clipper Craft label. Also look over the collection of overcoats and topcoats shown, too. You're certain to agree there just are no values that outshine Clippercraft. Compare Clippercraft with clothes selling for many dollars more. And now, Dr. Watson, may we have a look into the fabulous windmill? The windmill was on the Isle of Valkyrie in the Dutch province of Zeeland. It was just behind the huge sea dikes. The windmill stood silhouetted against the moon, while just beyond the earthen ridges of the dikes, a sea lashed at the coast furiously. A man wrapped in an oil skin and wearing gigantic boots was pounding at the door of the windmill. Yes? What can I do for you? I am the dike inspector. My name is Vanette. What do you wish, inspector? I want to talk to you. It's very important. You can tell me here. You don't have to come in. What's on your mind? This windmill is supposed to be abandoned. It is. I just stopped by for a moment. Did you? Yes, I was thinking of purchasing the mill, of restoring it to an active basis. I see. This is the first opportunity I've had to look at the mill. I'm leaving in a moment. I shall return tomorrow in the daylight for a clearer view. Have you finished lying? What do you mean, Inspector? I will tell you the truth. The arms of the windmill are stationary. The mill does not show any lights. Everyone in the neighborhood has believed the mill is useless, deserted. And so it is, during the day. Shall I continue? By all means, go on. Do go on. One night on my patrol, I came here to the window. I looked. I listened. You are using this mill for some kind of criminal business. People come here to see you. You give them papers, money. 
They are strange. They sneak in. They sneak out. They carry a weapon. I'm terribly sorry I was so rude when you first knocked. Uh, do come in, Inspector. I have an office upstairs. Perhaps we can discuss your discovery up there. All right. Let us go upstairs. Yours must be a pleasant task, Inspector. In the spring, yes, but in the winter, no. Uh, I should imagine the position is not very lucrative, Inspector. Not very. Then you might be interested in a few guilders to, shall we say, supplement your weekly pittance. I might be. I would be grateful if you would forget about this particular windmill. I have a few guilders in a chest at the top of this stairway. I'd be delighted to give them to you. How much? Ah, here we are. Chest is over there. Say a thousand guilders? Satisfactory? No. How much then? Five thousand. You've elaborate notions, Inspector. Five thousand? Not one guilder less? I wouldn't be difficult if I were you. You cannot frighten me. I drive the bargain. I have only to report you to the police. I said 5,000 guilders. You're a stupid, meddling idiot. It would not be worth one guilder to buy your silence. I haven't any way of knowing that you would not betray me after you'd collected the money. Get out. You will not pay my price. I will pay nothing. I shall go to the police. Go on. Police headquarters is less than a mile away. You do not want to reconsider? No. Good night, Inspector. Good night. I must apologize for not accompanying you downstairs again. I'm rather busy. You do not have to be polite. Charming, these long, winding stairways in your Dutch windmills. Most picturesque. Convenient, too. Convenient? Yes. If I should want to do away with someone, for instance... If what? All that's necessary is for me to... Push them! Ah! My name is DeWitt, Mr. Holmes. Cornelius DeWitt. Be seated, sir. This is my friend and colleague, Dr. Watson. How do you do? Dr. Watson? May I ask, Mr. DeWitt, what brings you here to Baker Street? Uh, I am the chief of police on the island of Valkorin, Mr. Holmes. It's on the western shore of the Netherlands. Ah, the Netherlands. Mr. DeWitt, in addition to your police duties, you have a domineering wife and you were once employed by a railway. Well, <laughs> your, your reputation, Mr. Holmes, is evidently well deserved. Holmes, how do you know these intimate details about Mr. DeWitt? Because he's making a desperate effort with his hand to conceal his cravat, which obviously embarrasses him. <laughs> because of its garishness, it's clear that he must possess a domineering mate who has forced him to sport the article of apparel, although he disapproves of it. Correct, sir? Uh, absolutely, Mr. Holmes. As for your railway background, you take an extraordinarily long step for a man of your stature, a characteristic of railway employees who've spent many years walking over ties. However, I assume you haven't come to Baker Street to discuss yourself. You have a case, I should say. A very difficult case, Mr. Holmes. That is why I've come to you. We had a dyke inspector named Van Ness. He's vanished. Really? When? Under what circumstances? He left on his usual tour of duty one afternoon. He patrolled a few miles to the shore. He was never seen again. Did anyone along his customary route see him that day? No, no one. Have you examined the patterns of his private life? Oh, very carefully. But Mr. DeWitt, he said, he yielded nothing? Nothing. He was happily married. He had no offspring. He owed a few small debts. That is about all. Well, couldn't he have fallen into the sea by accident? Oh, I hardly think so, Dr. Watson. Van Ness was a thoroughly experienced hand at strolling along the dyke road. I cannot help feeling he met a band of thieves or murderers. Would you come to Valkyrie, Mr. Holmes, and help us find the poor chap? Most certainly, Mr. DeWitt. The disappearance of Inspector Van Ness has a pungent, irresistible odor of deep intrigue. By Joe Holmes, I've never seen as foul a night as this. No wonder the Dutch are hardy folk. 
What with the way the sea roars at them, constantly threatening their lives. Wrap your greatcoat well about you, Watson. Yeah. We must examine the entire length of the road along this dike. The route of the missing inspector. I did think you were a bit undiplomatic in rejecting Mr. DeWitt's offer to accompany us. But he would be an encumbrance when we are stalking our prey. I spoke to him privately and requested that he keep his distance. But the police would over this area, Holmes. I don't see why we... Ah, evidently our missing inspector Van Ness reached this far on the road. How'd you know? Because of a piece of rope. Where? That road sign. Clearly it was shaken loose by the force of the wind. A hasty improvisation was devised. The sign is now held to that wooden post by a piece of rope. Yes, but the hope... Dutch are an orderly nation, Watson. This would have been repaired had the damage occurred more than a few days ago. I should say the inspector found the sign upon the ground and repaired it temporarily in this fashion. Therefore, on the day of his disappearance, he must have progressed this far. Oh, shouldn't we continue our search tomorrow and broad daylight? Definitely not, Watson. Light the lantern you brought along. Whatever evil force caused the downfall of the dike inspector is still at large. It must be stopped before it strikes again. Uh, oh, really, Holmes, we've, we've walked quite a distance, you know. We've poked about in a dozen barns and windmills. I say let's repair to the nearest tavern, the crackling fire, some brandy... Rest. I won't hear of it, Watson. <sighs> Hello, hear that? What? Listen. What the dickens could that be? It originates to our left, perhaps from that windmill. Come off the dike and across this meadow. Uh, must you dash so quickly home? Yes, it does come from that windmill have a closer look. It looks abandoned to me. The windows are boarded up. The arms don't move. The wood on the sides is rotting away. There's the cause of the sound we heard. The door of the mill. It's open. It's swinging back and forth in this wind. So we have a look inside? Not just yet. It's conceivable that we've more to learn by examining the surroundings. The lantern, Watson, turn it about. Yes. Very well. See the mill better now? Yes. No distinctive markings. To the right, Watson, yes. so the beam falls to the right. Grass has grown over the pathway leading to the mill. Of course it has. The mill's abandoned, Holmes. That's definite. One moment. What is it? The earth. You see? Uh, the earth? Step over here. Notice that earth, Watson. What do you see? Well, sort of a patch of earth that looks much lighter than the rest of the earth. There can be only one reason for that, my dear Watson. The earth's been freshly turned. There's less organic matter in subsoil. Notice how much more tightly packed the earth is all around that patch. Someone's been digging in the spot. To conceal something, eh? We shall soon know. Look about you. These farmers often leave a shovel or two lying by the mill. All right. There's none here, Holmes. Try closer to the mill. Yes, I found one. Excellent. Now we shall dig for whatever secret lies deep below the seemingly innocent grass. <laughs> Terribly deep, Holmes. Are you sure there might be something here? I've no doubt. Oh, this is fantastic, Roderick. Here in the black of night, digging into the... Wait, the shovel. I, th I feel something. Quickly, then. Oh, the shovel is earth. Where? It feels soft, Holmes. There we are. It's a human face. There's a body here. Yes. From the description provided us by Mr. DeWitt, I should say it's the body of the missing inspector. I'll push the earth away. Get it off of him. Body is bruised, lacerated. Yes. Spine snapped in two. Yes, monstrous death. Well, you found Van Ness, Holmes? As for who did away with him and buried his body? The answer to that question lies just before you, Watson. It, inside the abandoned windmill? Quite. You going in there now? Immediately. Or shouldn't we summon the authorities? That is not necessary. Yes, but, but Holmes, there's probably a homicidal maniac somewhere in that awful mill. Only a fiendish mind could have caused such a death. Yes, and we've a rendezvous with that mind. Shall we step inside? Here's the door. <laughs> Well, 
Dr. Watson, I- I'm curious to know what will become of Mr. Holmes when he steps inside of the fabulous windmill. It was unbelievable, Mr. Harris. I have a most gripping revelation for you. But right now, you've an interesting vital message, too, I don't doubt, about Clipper Croft clothes. Pay a visit to your Clipper Craft dealer tomorrow. You'll find much to amaze you in the new selection of Clipper Craft. Expensive-looking fabrics that are as long-wearing as they are smart. Tailoring, you can tell, was done by experts and really smooth, comfortable fit. Clipper Craft suits have the exclusive look of high-priced garments, yet you can own one at just a thrifty $40 or $45. The Clipper Craft plan makes all of this possible. It concentrates the huge buying power of more than 1,200 of America's finest stores from coast to coast and border to border. It keeps Clipper Craft's factories on a full-time basis throughout the year. Naturally, there are generous savings in manufacturing and distribution, savings that are passed on to the millions who wear Clipper Craft. That's why clothing experts agree Clipper Craft suits are the last word in value. That's why men who know insist on Clipper Craft clothes. So be sure to visit the Clipper Craft store in your city. These leading stores in the metropolitan area are proud to add their names to Clipper Craft in your suits, top coats, and overcoats. In Manhattan, Saks 34th, Broadway at 34th. John Wanamaker Men's Stores, Broadway at 8th and 67 Liberty Street. In Brooklyn, Abraham and Strauss. In Newark, New Jersey, Boulevard Men's Shop, Kresge, Newark. And in Jamaica, the B&B Clothes Shop, 16408 Jamaica Avenue. Well, Dr. Watson, I'm impatient to learn what you discovered inside the windmill. Well, Mr. Harris, Holmes and I left the body of Inspector Van Ness. And in the dead of night, with just a flickering lantern to guide us, we cautiously opened the door of the deserted mill. What do you see in there, Holmes? A table, a few chairs, millstones. Come in, Watson. Close the door. Think there's anyone upstairs? It's likely. The killer? Yes. Look, there's a cabinet. I'll open it. Papers. Yes. There's passports. Blank passports. Yes. As I thought, false passports, Watson. False? Yes. This is not the watermark of the official papers used for this purpose. Look there, Holmes. Money. Counterfeit, I should say. Let's see. Yes, note the finer lines on a pound note. The genuine are broken lines. These are actually minute dashes. What the devil is the map of India? This seems to be a list of hotels in the United States. I must admit, I'm utterly baffled, Holmes. I suppose it makes sense to you, of course. Certainly. This leather book, names and addresses in it. Leopold Munkatsi, Zurich. Florence McDonough, Glasgow. What is all this? These seemingly peculiar items, Watson, possess one characteristic in common. Travel. And what sort of travel? Illicit. Travel by fraudulent passports, by worthless currency, the travel of criminals. What we have here is a magnificent display of criminal talent. It requires considerable ingenuity to create these items so beautifully. The creator, I should say, awaits us at the top of the stairs. So let us mount them. Do you know who it is? Only one mind has the fertility to conceive of the plan that I believe this is, and the finesse to execute it. It's the mind of the one man whose intellectual prowess I respect. It's the mind of Professor Moriarty. Moriarty? It's after him. No, no, no. We shall steal up quietly, lest we disturb him. That's right, you are. Uh, what are you pulling that rope for? I'm moving a pawn, Watson. In my endless game, vis a vis Moriarty. Shall we go up? Yes, indeed. Ah, this confounded wooden stairway it creaks, so. Get a conversation, Holmes? Yes, do not proceed to the top of the stairs. Stop approximately three quarters of the way up. We can eavesdrop. Yes, capital. Here we are. Shh. And uh, how did you reach Holland, Elona? I was in Budapest, Professor Moriarty. It was a macabre journey. After the funeral, when we buried my dear departed husband, I rode off in the usual black draped carriage. But my driver did not return to my home. Instead, we dashed for the border. Uh, The police were unpleasantly close to learning how my husband had died. (laughs) Yes. I then made my way by rail on foot by hiding in wagons to Bratislava, to Vienna, then northward across Germany to Dortmund, and so into the Netherlands. My dear Ilona, the police of the entire continent have been notified by telegraph that you're wanted for the murder of your husband. Amazing, isn't it, Holmes? Silence, Watson. 
That is why I've come, Professor. You must help me. Certainly. Of course, before we may continue, there is the matter of reimbursement for my services. I have brought money. My fee will be 5,000 pounds. What? 5,000 pounds? A trifling sum for what I shall do, Alona. I shall present you with 20,000 pounds in counterfeit notes, splendidly camouflaged. I have a passport for you to Argentina. And steamer tickets reserved under an assumed name. But 5,000 pounds is impossible. my fee is unacceptable, you leave me without an alternative. I shall have to notify the police that you're here. Oh, no. No, I do not want you to do that, uh, Professor. It is just that it is so much money. Uh, could we not settle my debt to you on some other basis? Hmm. <laughs> Come, come. Five thousand pounds. Be quick about it. Oh, very well. Here you are. Thank you. Now, everything that you require is in this envelope, including your instructions and an address in Buenos Aires, where associates of mine will accommodate you. You'd better leave now. Your ship sails in the morning. She'll be coming down these stairs home. She'll see us. I really like that, Watson. Good night, Professor Moriarty. I shan't thank you. You've been more than compensated. Good night, Ilona. Bon voyage. Thank you. Oh, on your way downstairs, yes? you might send up Mr. Sherlock Holmes, who's waiting just below. What? Yes, Moriarty, I did step into your trap. The door I deliberately left flapping in the wind to attract your attention, Holmes, and draw you into the mill. I thought you'd find it magnetizing. Who are these two? Ilona, my dear. This is the celebrated detective, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Detective? No, never fear, never fear. As long as I have this gun, Mr. Holmes will not be a problem. His companion is Dr. John Watson. What are you up to, Professor? Be on your way, Lona. Holmes and I have business together. Good night, my dear. Good night. Careful, Holmes. He'll shoot at the slightest provocation. Oh, no, Dr. Watson. I have much better plans. At the window, Holmes, I could not mistake the two figures on the road of the dike. <laughs> so you left the door of the mill open, Moriarty, to lure us to it. To it. I realized this was a trap from the moment I heard the door swinging in the wind. In so secret a place as this, extra precautions would always be taken to see that the door was locked securely. Your eagerness to meet me again, Holmes, will cause your demise. Will it, Moriarty? And I have devised a special means for you to die. <laughs> I must compliment you, sir, on the magnificent criminal structure you've built in this mill. This windmill is an emergency exit for the men and women of the continent who are wanted by the police. Is it not? Yes, yes. For an enormous sum, you provide them with passports, money, entry visas, customs declarations, information, arms, devious routes to the farthest and darkest corners of the earth, where they may find welcome obscurity. Even more, Holmes. I have clothing for them, disguises, chemical and medical equipment in this windmill to change their appearance. An endless cavalcade of forgers, traitors, arsonists, major and minor thieves, kidnappers, murderers pass through this windmill. And thanks to my genius, they will elude the stupidities of law and live on. Now, descend the stairs, Holmes. Go on. Surely you would not choose the ignominious death of being shot by an ordinary pistol such as I have in my hand? Very well. I shall descend. What is that horrible noise? The wooden gears of the windmill, Doctor. The tremendous, powerful gears, like a dragon's teeth, turning slowly as the wind makes the arms of the mill revolve. You may see them as you go down. Look at them closely. They are relevant to your death. Oh, inspiring sight, eh, Holmes? Yes, quite. Shall I tell you how you will die tonight? I shall force you and later, Dr. Watson, to step closely enough to those gears so that you become caught in them. You will be slowly crushed to death, each portion of your body being ground to pulp by the teeth of the mill. A loathsome idea. Worthy of you, Moriarty. Uh, here we are, at the bottom of the stairway. The perfect spot for you to step toward the gears, Holmes. Perfect. Holmes, you may have infinite patience, but as for me... God, I'm... what's no be a fool, he'll shoot. Come on, Holmes. It's just a few steps toward the wooden gears. Once a portion of your clothing is caught, the rest is inevitable. 
Dr. Watson, don't turn away when he's caught. Even if you do not see what happens, you'll hear it. Well, I'm waiting, Holmes. Walk toward the gears. Just a few steps. That's it. One step. Two. Grab your gun! Police! Mr. DeWitt! Gentlemen, if you move toward me, I shall kill Dr. Watson. My gun's at his back. He's an ideal shield. Just don't fire DeWitt. You'll kill Watson. I'm leaving by the same door through which you entered, officer. Back up, Dr. Watson. So kind of you to protect me this way. Go on, fire at him. I'll risk it. No, don't. Too dangerous. Good night, gentlemen. Holmes, until we meet again. Shoot after him, DeWitt! Miss him! It's so dark out there. There he goes, running along the road on top of the dike. I'll have my men pursue him. That would be futile, Mr. DeWitt. He's disappeared already, as you may well observe. Your men would never find him. Money up is far too clever for an ordinary police force. It requires a brain equal to his. In short, sir, mine. And mine alone. It's most reassuring to be safely back here in the flat at Baker Street. Have you heard from the Vulculin police? Yes, Watson. In accordance with my suggestion, they confiscated the entire contents of the windmill. And that leather book of names and addresses, Moriarty's personal list of his clients, will be an infallible guide for the police of half a dozen nations to pick up divers' scoundrels. Ilona, the murderess. Whatever became of her? When she left the mill, she walked instantly into the hands of DeWitt and his constable. Well, that's what I wanted to ask, Holmes. How did they find us at the mill? You'll recall my saying, Watson, that I spoke to DeWitt and requested that he keep his distance. I was not foolhardy enough to embark on the venture without expecting his assistance. We agreed that he and his men would patrol the original three miles of the late dike inspector's post, which they did. I promised to supply a signal as to our whereabouts the moment help was required. I see, and you did that by pulling the rope in the mill, eh? The rope releases the mechanism of the arms, Watson. There was a good wind. I knew the arms would then start spinning. That mill was supposed to be abandoned. I knew when DeWitt and his men saw the arms revolving in the deserted mill, they'd come a-running. <laughs> splendid, Holmes, splendid. Of course, I'll never know why each step as we go along is so difficult for me, yet so obvious to you. It depends upon your definition of the word obvious, my dear Watson. The obvious is that which is hardest to discern. <laughs> Well, Dr. Watson, the adventure of the fabulous windmill was just as hair-raising as you'd promised. Even more so, as a matter of fact. Now, may we have a hint about the adventure you've planned for next week? Yes, next week I shall relate to you the adventure of the Uddington Witch, Mr. Harris. A macabre tale, I assure you, involving a strange oak tree, a shriek in the night, and an unpressed pair of trousers. The makers of Clipper Craft clothes and more than 1,200 stores from coast to coast have brought you another in the new series of broadcasts featuring the world's most famous detective, Sherlock Holmes. Our stories are based upon the character Sherlock Holmes created by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, and the program is produced and directed by Basil Lochran. Sherlock Holmes is played by John Stanley, Dr. Watson by George Spelton. This week's story was written by Howard Merrill with special music by Albert Berman. If you don't know your Clippercraft dealer, write Clippercraft, 200 Fifth Avenue, New York City. Be sure to listen next week to Sherlock Holmes in The Adventure of the Uddington Witch. <laughs> this is Guy Harris speaking for Clippercraft Clothes versus the Mutual Broadcasting System. Following station identification, you'll hear Behind the Front Page with Gabriel Heater. Fly Eastern Airlines for double dependability. Dependable airliners, dependable personnel. To fly anywhere in the world, call Eastern or your travel agent. Save 5%. Buy round-trip tickets. This is WOR, New York.